Hi guys and welcome to this day six of our week of prayer. This is today our final day of our week of prayer. So, what have we done as we've gone our way through this? Well, first of all, we did Thanksgiving. We just took time just to thank God for all the stuff that he's been doing. We then prayed for growth for us as a church, spiritually, as well as numerically. From there, we moved on to praying for our kids' work and all the fabulous stuff that's been going on there. From there, we moved into evangelism and looked at all the initiatives that we've got in place and began to pray for those. Yesterday, we looked at our charities that we're involved with, our mission partners, and prayed into their ministries. And today, we are praying for the future of our church. What will it look like? What are we doing and why? So, today's Bible verse that I'm going to choose to look at, I hinted at yesterday, is in James chapter 1. And I'm reading verses uh, 5 and 6. Listen to this. It says this. If you need wisdom, our generous God will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, make sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. So why are we looking at this? Well, as a church, uh, we're, we're aware that, that there's a future in front of us and we want to walk with wisdom into that and we want to walk with discernment into that. We don't just want to just have some brilliant ideas and just run with it, but actually we want to be able to sit back and say, God, where are you? What are you doing and how can we get involved? Uh, and so we've got there's several brilliant ideas that, that we're going to be looking at tonight, um, but uh, to, to start off our time, we're going to be using uh, a time of worship. Uh, we're going to be just lingering in the presence of God. We're going to be singing uh, the song by Brenton Brown, All Who Are Thirsty. Uh, and again, it's just this kind of like sense of we're just inviting God to come. Uh, and the refrain of that bridge, that chorus where it says, Come Lord Jesus, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. As deep cries out to deep, come. And our prayer is that as we worship God tonight, tonight's prayer meeting is going to be slightly different. You see, because actually instead of it being very heavily focused on things that we're praying for, actually we're just taking a step back and just going to uh, raise up some, some subjects and just pray, but also just wait on God. Because what we long is to be in communion, in conversation, in friendship with God. So as always, we start off our prayer time by just reflecting and thanking God. Guys, I want you just to encourage you. We've, we've covered a lot of subjects this week. Some of the subjects will have resounded with some of you different to others. So what I want you to do is take a moment and actually just come to God uh, with thanksgiving. Like there's just a lot, just choose some of the things that we've prayed about and thank God for it. Thank God for the journey that we've gone on. Right? Whether that is the amount of times that we've opened the baptism tank, whether it's the amount of people that have come to faith, whether it's the amount of children that are in the building, whether it's the level of excitement as we're moving forward, like whatever it is, like let's start by just thanking God and reminding ourselves of just how great God is. So press pause and pray now. So the next thing is based around the question, why do we do what we do? For us as a church, we've made a huge focus. Instead of on the church services, which is really easy as a church to do. I know I've been part of church before where everything we do is based around actually like the church service. You know, and that's the chief priority. We looked and realized actually, do you know what? Our church services, they're pretty cool. But they kind of do themselves. Like, do we, do we need to be, like, dreaming up new cool ways to do stuff? No, actually, if we're going to spend any of our time and effort, it has to actually be, instead, on building community. And we've been saying that we long to create a community where Christ is at the center of that. So the inevitability is somebody enters our community that they're probably going to find Jesus. So to do this, we spend a lot of time just looking at um, 
meals. Like, how do we cause people to linger? Linger cause, lingering causes people to build friendships. Uh, and that and choosing, like intentionally choosing to build friendships with those within our immediate community. So the first question is, why do we do what we do? Uh, and at the moment, we feel that for, that for this last season, that that's been our major priority. And as we move forwards, we feel that that's probably still what God is calling us to do. For we need to be a church that is deep. But at the same time, we also need to be a church that is widely spread, that, that is, is, is inviting people to come in. So it's not that we're just being a seeker-friendly church. But it's also that we're not just being a deep, exclusive church, but actually what we're looking to do is find some way to be the two things at the same time. How do we dig deep into the things of God while still remaining, our doors wide open, inviting people to come and to have an encounter with the living God? So this question, why do we do what we do? So I'm going to encourage you to press pause in a brief moment and actually just ask God, like, Lord, what, what is your priority for us as a church, Lord? As we move forwards, where do you want us to spend our time? And as you, as you pray this, as you ask these questions, sit in a position of, of, of openness. We encourage uh, our people of our church to sit in silence with their arms open wide and, and invite God. And sit with your Bible at the ready. If you feel prompted or you're reminded of a Bible verse, go find that Bible verse. You know, take, take a moment to do this. Google is your friend, you know, as long as that you remain on the process of finding it out rather than just checking your notifications. Okay? It's a chance to do this. Lord, why do we do what we do? What are your priorities? Take a moment just to pray and to ask. So, the big question on our hearts as elders of the church, as the leadership of the church, a big question is this, what next? You see, we have in our building 100 seats, right? And we have the facility for 100 seats. We can't really fit anymore. You know, we could get a little bit cleverer, we might be able to pull them forwards and maybe squeeze an extra 10 in, but that doesn't really solve the problem, right? 100 seats, that's what we've got. And if everybody at church turned up at the same time, we're pretty much around about the 100 people mark. Now, this is exciting, right? It is exciting. But it does raise the question, like, we can't remain in this place. Because if we're not careful, what we will end up doing is, when a new family arrives, is we will essentially be saying, hi, lovely to meet you. We can't have you here. There's a fabulous church around the corner. And as we continue to look at this idea of reaching out to the lost, as we continue to reach out to those who are searching for God, how do we do that? We need to start thinking of what the future is going to look like for us as a church. So I foresee three options. Okay, And I don't think these are mutually exclusive. I think these things could potentially work together at the same time. But here's where... Where is we're praying? This is where we feel that God might be calling us to. So the first, the easiest thing to do is to jump to dual services, to do two services on a Sunday morning. Now, I might add that this is something that actually scares a lot of people because there's that initial aspect, well, to whom do I choose to go to church with? Uh, and, and actually, especially when we've been spending so much time building community, it feels like we're then tearing that community apart into two completely separate things. One of the things that we are considering doing, and this is again, we're just sitting back and just waiting, going, God, what, what, what do you want us to do? So we're not saying we're going to do this, but this is something we are genuinely considering, will be to create two morning services that is the same service essentially at both times. Uh, one will be more of a family oriented that will have children's slots uh, and, and have children's work within it. And the other one will be more of a, essentially the same concept, same talk, all the other stuff, but maybe a little bit more reflective uh, and less energetic energetic because it's not got the kids in it uh, with essentially coffee break in between the two services and this is designed so that the two congregations although they will be worshiping at different times will still have that social aspect together at the same time in the middle um, and so the initial concept is that we could move to dual services the next one is that we begin to look at what, does it, what would it look like to do a new build. 
Now, this has been something we've been bouncing around as an idea. Some people this light to fire under and they're so excited about, other people get really nervous about. Right? The reality is that we have a building that, uh, that, that probably should have been pulled down maybe a decade or so ago, that, there's, that, we, there's, that we are trying to keep a building that was never really designed to be open for the length of time that it has been. Uh, and we've, yeah, we've done a nice facelift, but it's still the same issue. So one is that we literally knock the whole building down uh, get an architect to help us build something uh, absolutely stunning that it would, would suit us not just now but also as we continue to grow and do things over the next uh, however many decades ahead of us as a church. The third option is that we begin to think about doing a church plant. Okay? And that means looking, praying, and trying to work out what area uh, around us, uh, or perhaps maybe a little bit further, uh, that, that, that hasn't got a Christian presence, and that we could facilitate, instead of trying to get them to come to us, how can we take church to them? Uh, and there, I think there's something beautiful about church plants. But I might add, to all three of these options, there's instant fear, because, well, what happens if we launch into these and it changes the way things feel now. I think the reality is, no matter what happens, this where we are at the moment is changing. And we have to be ahead of the curve on that change, rather than just allowing the change to happen to us. So, we're gonna just take a moment and just begin to, to pray. And just begin to pray into that. Uh, like I say, I don't think these are things, the three na ne necessarily exclusive things. I think the brain, that my brain would work, it was uh, potentially say, let's begin conversations with an architect. Let's begin to look at doing a new build. And in the in-between time, between now and then, we begin to do dual services until we're in that place where the new building is and where those two, serv those two services could again come back together and begin to worship as one. And then I would probably say, again, this is how my brain would work, is that once we hit the one, 150, 200 mark as a regular worship that we look at taking 20 to 30 people, gifted people, and take them from the mother church, that is us, and plant it somewhere else. Uh, and then actually begin to look at how do we then do some sort of service once a month where that new satellite church or the new uh, planted church meets then with us as still part of the main church and worships together. Like this just, like this is, if given to me, this is, this is how that I would love to be able to see this move forward. Words. This sounds like good ideas. What we want is God ideas. So guys, uh, this is pretty much it, right? We're now just going to sit and wait on God. So you've heard where we're going. Right? You've heard our ideas as we're putting stuff forwards. That's not to say that these are the things that are going to happen because actually what matters to us more is that we are where God wants us to be, doing what God wants us to do, and that that is our chief priority. So let us begin now to pray. God, this church is growing and this is fabulous, but our building stops us from growing any more than where we are at the moment. Lord, help us to know what is your heart for us as the worshiping community of Four Rooks Baptist Church. Lord, as we move forward as a community, Lord, help us to do this with you, Jesus, at the forefront, you leading us. God, help us. Lord, we ask you for wisdom, knowing that you will give it. Guys, let's pray.